how to uh, upgrade your grid charger. So basically, here's a maintenance charger that just came back. We start by removing these screws. One of them is going to have a star washer underneath it. This is to allow the two pieces of the cover, which have a thick powder coating on them, to make electrical contact. At least it moves it in that direction. Now these uh, maintenance chargers, more so than the overnight chargers, have a problem with the uh, little black cover that we use to cover this auxiliary port. It uh, sticks out a little too far inside, so when you're taking it off, the trick is to grab and pull out on this as you lift this panel. Once you get it loose, you'll also notice that this piece right here, this little little uh, connector needs to be pulled back to get it out. So you basically go in and in reverse like that. So pull it out this way. You can't get it out because this thing's in the way in front here. So you pull this up. Then you can pull that out and you can flip it and basically just uh, remove these two connectors here. Okay, so that gets us apart. Okay, so now we've got the box open. We're going to remove the old microcontroller and put it on a new one. <clears throat> now whenever you're working with any integrated circuit, especially the CMOS type, it's very important that you keep uh, mindful of the fact that static electricity can damage these parts very easily and you won't even know what's happened. And you may see a problem down the road that's related to that, but uh, you won't be able to connect it to the incident. So the best thing is to take very good uh, safety precautions as far as grounding is concerned during the installation process. Another thing to note is that the LED on these sticks out purposely, and if you push them in, you're going to damage the LED and have other problems. So the key here is to protect that LED. Now the reason it sticks out is so you can see whether the charger is done uh, from uh, an angle. But we put this little piece around here to protect it during all the other aspects of moving this around and stacking things and so forth. So let's just put that on there so that when we're working here we don't damage anything. So now the first thing you do is you take a small screwdriver and using the connector that's already here, you reach in. I think I'm going to take a little closer picture to this so we get a better shot of everything. Okay, so let's uh, <clears throat> take the screwdriver and begin to pry the edge of the microcontroller up and watch carefully how it just pops. Okay, Not much, just a little bit. Now you take your screwdriver and you bring it in from underneath, rotating slightly while holding this end down so you don't bend the pins. And if you do it just right, comes out nicely. Now we described, uh, you notice I'm leaving it in the socket. Uh, static electricity gets between your body and the thing that it's going to uh, uh, discharge into. If you become at the same polarity as the thing you're going to discharge to, it can't discharge. So the first thing you do is you grab the case and you hold the pieces that are likely to be grounded to the part you're changing and then you have basically got yourself a grounded environment. So you remove this part place it down here. You can keep your hands against the metal so you don't ever have a chance of building up a charge. Place it in the socket and I pre-bend the pins for you so that should be fairly simple. Make sure the notch is down towards this connector here and then with two hands press it down. You've now installed a new microcontroller. Take the old one, put it back on the package and if you'd like to send it back to me, I'll appreciate it because I can put it to use in another product. And that's how you change the chip. The little black cover is the next thing to be dealt with over here. This little black cover, while making a beautiful tight seal for this that you can't remove even if you try to, which is what's part of its problem, uh, turned out to stick inside the box also quite uh, deeply and that causes a problem as far as rubbing against the connector we're going to put on the board. So this, you'll notice there's two areas that have little relief areas in them. Just press it in and push out, press it in and push out and now you can just pop the thing right out. 
Now the new covers we've we've made. Stand this up so you can see it. Whoops, it's too high. Okay, the new covers we made are basically more rubbery, and we put a nylon, a knurled screw, and a nylon nut inside, so there's no metal. And these fit into these holes, but they're pretty snug. You basically have to seal them up like you would a. Once you get it in there, it's in there good. But you can remove it by just pulling sideways and lifting it off. But it isn't going to fall out on its own, and it's going to protect those pins, which uh, carry 120 volts on them, so you don't want to be sticking your fingers on them. Okay, so that's basically the new covers then replaced. And you can see it sticks out much less than the old one. You can take the old one and save it, do whatever you want with it. Uh, I don't need it. Okay, so here's the... Uh Here's the power supply that we're going to add the connector to. I want you to look carefully down here. Let me get this so I can zoom around as to where we're located. Here's the back of the machine. And you've got to basically get down into this corner right there. Okay. I'm going to zoom in from there. Okay, so as you can see from the picture here, this little connector fits right into those holes. I want you to notice something here. See how sloppy these holes are? You can move the thing around a little bit. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you're putting it in the optimum direction for installing. Now you also notice that you could put this in crooked this way or this way. If you're going to err, you want to err on the direction of being up slightly, but flush with the board is fine as well. Now, you can't hold this with one hand, apply the solder with the other hand, and then have one more hand left over for the soldering iron. So there's some little tricks that you learn. Like one of them is to get the solder in place before you worry about the position, which we're going to do on this first pin. Because the solder can be reheated. You, know, you get the thing nice and hot. You get your solder flowing. And then while it's still hot, you tip the thing ever so slightly and get it in a all the way up position. Now you can release it. Once that hardens, you're basically all set because it's holding things just where you want them. So now we're going to go in and do the rest of the connections. I'll turn it a little bit so we can get a better look at the solder flowing in there. Okay. So now you can start on the far one. And the trick here is you don't want any solder to bridge the gap between these pins because some of them have 120 volts on them and that wouldn't be a very nice uh, thing if that happened. You'd blow the fuse instantly. So I'm going to start on the rear one here and make sure you don't hit any other wires while you're heating these up. Now the nice thing about this is these nice big holes and pins that protrude through the other side give you an opportunity to uh, solder from the top side of the board rather than the back side. So this makes life easier all, all the way around. And of course after we did a few the wrong way we came up with this technique. Dan, uh, Dan Mr. Efficiency here said this is a better way to go and I agree with him. So even though the picture on the website shows that being done from the bottom this is a better way. Just make sure your iron's hot enough there's a lot of metal here to heat up. And if your iron's not hot enough, what happens is you get a just a bridging of solder across the top of the connection, which doesn't really do a very thorough job of mechanically or electrically connecting things. And if you put the connector in and out you know, a couple of dozen times and wiggle it, you could break those loose. But if you let that solder go in there and heat the pin up and let it sink down so that it's coming through the other side, fills the hole completely, flows nice and uniformly. These are connections you don't want to skimp on as far as the amount of solder. And you also don't want to overheat things because then the little nylon shell can melt and you'll have problems with the pins not lining up. And there you are. And it looks nice and solid. There's no uh, solder protruding through the other side. You take a visual look at it. Nope, no bridging going on there. And uh, you've now installed the connector. Okay, so you've got the uh, charger upgraded. Now you uh, install the boards back in again. 
remembering that they go like this. You basically just take the connectors and bring them around. Same with this one. When you put it back in again, you'll have an easier time now because the black connector on the side isn't going to give you any problems. You've got to put the back end in first and slide the front end. Insert the screws. You can tell which screw had the star washer on it. You want to use it in the same place. No sense making new holes through your beautiful powder coating. Now these are aluminum cases, not steel. So even if you get a little ding in your uh, yellow powder coating, the chances of it rusting are zero and the chances of it corrosion, corroding are pretty low because aluminum tends to self-heal. So even though it costs about twice as much for the materials for the box, the actual cost of the covers themselves didn't really matter much due to that. So here's your uh, star washer location. Now we're going to go into uh, the changes in how the thing operates that have been uh, put in in the new software.